Hi, my name is Ian Yip. In this lecture, I'm going to describe the procedure of implant placement step by step. Before the operation, we need a comprehensive clinical and radiographical examination. The dimension of the implant fixture should be determined before the surgery. In the following video, we will place a tissue level implant with 4.1 mm in diameter and 10 mm in length at the right maxilla. When the local anesthesia is effective, a mid-crestal incision is made. The cut penetrates through mucosa, periosteum, and reaches down to bone. Intracellular incisions are made at the adjacent teeth at both buccal and palatal aspects reaching the line angles. The incisions are joined to the mid-crestal incision at the proximal teeth surfaces. In general, vertical relieving incisions are avoided in implant placement without bone grafting. When the incisions are completed, the buccal and palatal flaps are raised by a fine periosteal elevator. The smooth side of the elevator shall be facing the soft tissue. A tissue plane is developed between the periosteum and bone. When the soft tissue plane is correct, the flap could be easily raised. Gentle handling of the flaps, especially around the adjacent teeth, could avoid tearing of soft tissues. When the mucoperiosteal flap is sufficiently raised, Retraction sutures could be placed palatally for better exposure of the surgical site. The entry point of the implant is marked by round burrs or sharp surgical drills. If the adjacent teeth are well aligned and the alveolar bone has minimal resorption, the initial osteotomy site shall be located midway, mesiodistally and buccolingually. The initial mark shall be about 2 to 3 mm deep. In normal bone, the cortical layer would be perforated and a bleeding spot would be seen. Copious irrigation is required throughout the osteotomies to avoid overheating of bone. A twist drill of about 2 mm in diameter would be used to continue the osteotomy. The motion of drilling shall be vertical and the long axis of implant could be decided. Do not drill to full length yet. The preliminary three-dimensional position of the osteotomy is then verified with a direction indicator. If the initial osteotomy is not accurate at this point, it could still be correctable because the preparation is shallow. When the initial position is satisfactory, the osteotomy is deepened with the same twist drill to the desired depth according to plan. The horizontal lines of the drill are reference marks corresponding to the length of the implant. The diameter of the osteotomy is enlarged by drills with larger diameters. The subsequent drills could be either cylindrical or taper, depending on the final configuration of the implant body. The drill speeds shall be adjusted according to the recommendation by manufacturers. Actively control the handpiece and remain pumping action, moving up and down only. The wobbling of the drill would cause uneven enlargement of the osteotomy site, which would in turn influence the stability of the implant. The density of the bone would be felt while drilling. If the bone is very dense, pre-tapping of the bone may be necessary. Some implant systems have fixture with coronal flare. Such profile shall be developed in order to accommodate the configuration. Again, the drilling shall be very well controlled. We are now ready to place the implant. The fixture could be inserted slowly with clockwise rotation. If machine placement is preferred, make sure the mode of machine is switched to low rotation speed. Fixture mounts may be present in some systems. They could help in visualizing the axis of implant during placement and particularly useful in placements of multiple implants. All rough surfaces of the implant shall be covered by surrounding bone. If the implant cannot be screwed in with the suggested top limit, 
The osteotomy site may need to be modified by larger diameter drills or additional screw tapping. If the insertion torque is too high, the configuration of the fixture abutment junction may be damaged or excessive bone compression may occur. On the other hand, if the implant is too loose, it is prone to failure. An implant with larger diameter or longer length shall be used after modification of the osteotomy. When the implant is in place, a healing cap or a closure screw is connected and tightened. The cap shall be slightly above the ginger fee, which allows soft tissue to heal around it. After connection, we have to make sure the opposing tooth is not biting on it. The soft tissue shall be well adapted around the neck of the implant before suturing. Excessive soft tissues may need to be trimmed. The flaps are then stabilized with simple interrupted or mattress sutures. Non-resorbable or resorbable sutures could be used. Monofilament suture is one of the best options as it attracts less plaque during healing. Postoperative radiographs are usually taken immediately after the implant surgery to confirm the position of the implant and ensure the important anatomical structures and roots of adjacent teeth are not damaged. To perform a good implant surgery, proper assessment and planning are essential. In addition, meticulous handling of soft and hard tissue could reduce postoperative discomfort of patients. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Goodbye.